On this channel, we've been preaching dollar cost averaging or DCA form pretty much as existence. And when a piece of data comes out that disproves that, I got to talk about it. And this was actually from bitcoinnews.com. And it's a pretty good website. The link's in the description. A lot of good information over there. And this little piece kind of caught me by surprise because in all honesty, I thought DCA was it. But maybe we're all wrong. So this was a report. DCA investment strategy could yield up to 75% less than a lump sum strategy. Well, tell me more. So this is what we have. Clients interested in buying Bitcoin face a decision of when to invest for maximum returns. And I took a look at four different types, a DCA versus lump sum 2017 a day, DCA versus lump sum 2019 a day, DC versus lump sum 2021 a day, and of course, the better DCA strategy. So let's just back up for a second and take a look at this. So this is actually a report and they just kind of just did some backward looking data. And I have to stress this, that this is all data from Bitcoin. This has nothing else with S&P 500, NASDAQ, any kind of altcoins, only Bitcoin. So we're going to take a look at this and see where we're at. So DCA versus lump sub 2017 to today itself. And the performance of different strategies were analyzed over the last six years. Lump sum purchasing outperformed DCA strategies during this period. And it was like not even close uh, as far as lump sums. So what I want to do and, you know, it talks about how much more you can make here, and that's great. But what if we just broke that down into simpler terms? So what I'm going to do is, thankfully, uh, Ben over into the Cryptoverse, he's got this site where you can do DCA simulation analysis. And before I go over this, everything I'm going to do right now, you can very easily go over there and get this for yourself. And you know what? For the DCA strategy, it's free. If you go to intothecryptoverse.com, uh, click on Get Premium Access, there's a light plan. It's called free. Now there's other ones and there's a sale going on right now. And if you use my link, you get 10% off the first month. So have at it if you want to. But what I'm going to show you is in the free plan. Now there's a bunch of other things I'm going to show you today, which are not like treasury, treasury yields and consumer loans and debt. But we'll get into that in a second. So if we take a look here, uh, Bitcoin DCA simulation analysis, let's just take Bitcoin. This is pretty much what they did. You can, it's a hundred bucks or 10 bucks or whatever you, you know, whatever you think you're going to do or whatever you want to play around with. And you can put in the, the amount here. I put in Bitcoin $100 per week starting in January 1st, 2017, because that's pretty much what we have here, DCA versus lump sum 2017 to today. So what would we have done? Well, what they're, what they're saying is, is this. If you DCA, and we can see right here, it says $100 you're going to invest, and you would have on January 2nd, 2017, $100 worth of Bitcoin. And the price of Bitcoin on January 2nd, the asset price was $1,019. Pretty good. But if you just waited seven days, you would have got it at 10% off. Just saying. But that doesn't matter. because It's all going to be the longevity. So again, we have $100 and we're going to dollar cost average every week at $100. Now, if we would take that entire amount to 2020 or today, August 14, 2023, uh, the invested amount would have been $34,000. $400. So over here, we're going to take, let's just say for, for giggles, that we actually had $34,400 and we wanted to do this. We could just take that and drop it into one lump sum, bam, and there we go. And before anybody starts to say, well, Rob, what about for like these incredibly overheated bull markets? Like what if I would have bought in November of 2021? We'll get to that. Just hold on. But let's just say it's your time during a bear market. And there's a lot of bear markets. If you believe in the four-year cycles like I do, I mean, it kind of just repeats and repeats. We had a halving in 2012, 2013 all-time high, 2014 and 15 were awful years. 2016, we ramped up all for a halving. 2017, all-time high. 18 and 19 were bad years, 2020 and on we go. So let's just say for, for giggles, we put in $34,400. We didn't want a dollar cost average. Did you know that in that first bull run, if you would have done that, on January 1st or 2nd, 2017, your lump sum of Bitcoin, if you would have sold at the top, which is roughly December 18th, you would have had six, a profit of $647,000, $635, so almost $650,000, which is almost a 1,200% difference. Now, if you would have dollar cost average $100 every week for the whole year, you would have invested $5,100, which is not bad. And you would have had $50,000, which have been a nice little 10x there. But again, if we take a look at the lump sum strategy, it did work. Now, 
Moving forward, we would have gone to, to the, the lean years. Again, if we would have lump summed $34,000 back in the day, that $34,000 on February 25th, 2019, which was you know, not the best time as everything started to go, go down, oh, excuse me, December 3rd, 2018, you, the lump sum would have been worth 119000 Okay, not too bad. You put in 34000 but the invested amount was $10,200. So again, not too bad. Now, here's where it gets crazy. If you would have done it, and yes, we're cherry picking data, and waited all the way through 2017 and just diamond hands it, and went all the way here, and you sold at the tip top, congratulations, I couldn't do it. November 15th, the original 30 some thousand dollars that you invested into Bitcoin, that lump sum, would have been worth 2,215,000. But if you would have dollar cost average every single day, every single week, $100, you would have put in 25,000 and you would have had $317,000. So again, a little bit more like 10, 15 X somewhere around there. Check my math. So it's looking pretty good. Again, things go down, things go up. But you can see that lump sum strategy in this case, even in 2022, when we had a nice little fallout, your lump sum would have been worth half a million dollars. And what you dollar cost average would have been worth 82,000 and you would have invested 30. So that's looking pretty good. So that's the first one. And if we come down here, well, did, did the lump sum beat DCA strategy? Well, as a matter of fact, it did. So 2019 a day, same thing. All things being equal, 100 weekly, 2019. So we start here, $100. Lump sum of Bitcoin, 23000 If we would have gone all the way over here and just waited, our lump sum would have been worth 390000 Not bad for dumping 23000 into a very volatile asset class, but you can see how a lump sum strategy vastly outperformed the dollar cost average of 95000 of the game, 95,476. And then even in our lean years, you're still up a lot more. Again, investing 23,000, you'd still be up all the way through moving forward. So there is that positivity. But what about if we take a look at 2021 to today? So if we take a look at that, 2021, we're investing 13,500, again, the same thing. We started on January 1st, 2021 in the bull run years. And we can see that if we just drop it all on Bitcoin, again, the price on what, January 4th, 21, that would have been 33,000, close to what it is uh, right now. We would have actually done okay if we would have just ex extended things out. April 12th, 2021, pretty good time. We would have invested 13,500 and we would have almost doubled it in a very short amount of time, January, February, March, almost in two or three months. That's pretty good. And then of course, if we would have dollar cost average, we would have put in 1500, we still would have had 2000. But you can see that dollar cost averaging, it's very safe, but as far as for the lump sum, we can see that it didn't do too well. However, moving forward, we can see that in actuality on the uh, bull run years, as we get into March and the lean times, uh, we can see that if we would have put in 13, 1,500, you can see around here, around June, 2022, things start to switch. So the lump sum that you were up, now you're starting to come down and you actually go into the red right around here. Because what happened, you put a lot of money into it and that's the risk that you take. Now, there's big gains to be had over here, but boy, you got a diamond hands forever and just keep going, going. And some of you, that's, that's what you do and that's great. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. You can do whatever you want to. So for this one in Bitcoin, I can say that for in this situation for the past, it looks like, and it definitely is, that lump sum outperformed the dollar cost averaging. Now, the better DCA strategy it talks about is longer DCA strategies perform worse than shorter ones, emphasizing the cost of waiting on the sidelines when investing in Bitcoin. Even when comparing daily DCA strategies, the shorter 10-day strategy performed better in the 15 and 30 day, they'll all slightly underperform the average lump sum strategy from 2017 to 2023. And that's just talking about Bitcoin. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but 
I started to think to myself, well, there's actually two things. And the first thing I, I talk, I always remember is that there is a, a chart and you can find this in the description below. It's just called my DCA five examples. Actually it's six. I take a look at uh, uh, Chainlink and Dogecoin and a bunch of other different ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, over how you would dollar cost average. But there's a, there's a, a caveat and I call it a dash assault. Even if you dollar cost average, which as time goes on, you do pretty well, sometimes not as well as lump sum. But how would that look if we lump summed Dash? Well, thankfully, uh, Ben's got it on his website. So I picked Dash and I put in $100 a week starting in 2018, January 1st. Let's just, let's just go there, we'll just start 2018. If I would have lump summed that altcoin, here's what we're looking at. So again, $100 per week, 2018 to today, if I did that, that's about $29,000. If I did a lump sum, here I have 29,200 or $100 of Dash. And as time goes on, and not that much time I might add, from January to October, within the year, December 31st, 2018. Let me back this up a little bit. Lump sum, 2000. You can see that I'm actually, unfortunately, uh, in the negative, in t actually October. So I got a nice 10 months of going, I'm a genius, but actually all that's happening is I'm just bleeding against Bitcoin. So as we can see this, yes, the lump sum strategy does work in certain situations, but I'm not gonna say it's gonna work in every situation. And that's the caveat. Then of course we can see over here, well, what if I just hang on to it? Well, if you lump summed it, going all the way to today, uh, you'd have $877 out of that 29,000. But if you dollar cost average, you'd have 10,918 which is pretty good, but unfortunately, you invested 29,200 in the Dash. Sorry about that, didn't work out so well. Hey, these things are gonna happen. So let's take a look at Tron. So lump sum again, we can see that in 2018, if we put in 29,200, we went to them pretty good until about the end of the year. Again, October and all coins start to fade. And we can just see here that it just starts to go into the negative. Actually, let's see, lump sum, lump sum. Yeah, right around August, that's not great. And then of course we come over here. Now on the run up, that's not too bad. Uh, for the lump sum, you put in 29,200, your lump sum would have been worth 81,123. However, if we had a dollar cost average Tron back in 2018, 100 bucks a week, you'd actually have $106,297. And actually this purple graph will show you that the dollar cost averaging versus lump sum is vastly superior. Well, it's debatable if you say vastly, but it is superior and it's looking pretty good. Even today, you would invest the 29,000. If you lump summed it, you'd have 43,000 and 69,000 for the dollar cost averaging. But what about ETH? Again, 29,200, we take a lump sum of 29,200, dump it all on ETH on January 1st, 2018. How do we do? Well, uh, not too well. Again, about a year or so, we'd already, be down to uh, 6,600, 4,900. Actually, we're in the red and uh, not doing so hot. So we go here, it's pretty much dead. And then of course it starts to turn around. But what about in 2021? Well, if you lump summed it and put in 29,200 on 2018, you'd have $147,969.76, not bad. But if you just put a dollar cost average, you have almost double if you get over to November 15th and you got to eat the 331,000. So again, dollar cost averaging this situation would have, shaped, would have saved you a lot of pain moving forward. And then there's this. So I don't know what you want to do. Uh, my plan is I'm sticking to my plan, just dollar cost averaging. I know right now we could be headed to a lot of different pain, but for me, I look at these things and just take a look at the risk, the time and risk bands. And you can find that on the site and in the Cryptoverse. But I talked about this recently and it's very simple. The time and risk bands is as such. The different days that Bitcoin specifically, and I've mapped this out for, for Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple other ones, and you can find this, is that when it's when in this range of, of the risk level 0.3 to 0.4, 
as an example, just to use round numbers, I'll put 100 bucks a week. This is called dynamic DCA. As it starts to get a little more risky, I put a little bit less into Bitcoin. But if it gets, if it gets less risky, meaning the price goes down, and we start to get uh, into some negative yields, I start to put in more. And as time goes on, I put in more and more and more. Now, I did do this thing called micro DCAing at one point where I uh, reduced the amount that I actually put in, but I still followed the dynamic DCA. As we went down, I put it more in. As we went up, I put less in. Now I'm doing the uh, uh, pretty much the whole uh, as buying uh, whole as much as I can since I think it was February of this year. So I was still buying the dip even in that November dip, but I wasn't doing as much. It is true. So we have this as far as dynamic DCA, and that's just one option. And again, I just want, cannot stress this enough, which is you can do lump sum strategy. You can try that out. You can, you can, you know, it's whatever you want to do. But just remember that we saw what happened in 2021 if we went to the very top, the, the, the tip top. And right now people are saying, well, you know, the market might just start to rip and we might see all time highs for the S&P 500. And of course, this Bitcoin heaven is coming up. So everything's going to be, you know, rosy and dandy. and It's going to be awesome. But just remember that there are some shaky grounds afoot. And there is also a fear of a recession. And recessions come, risk assets take a, take a hit. There's this thing called the treasury yield spreads. And a treasury yield, the yield curve, is this is what it looks like now. And it shouldn't look like this. This is the one month, two month, three months, six months, all the way to 30 years for, for, for T-bills. And what you get as far as your yield. A six month T-bill treasury at 5.55% is not where it should be. That means that you're going to lock this up for your fiat cash. You're going to almost, you get five and a half percent. For three months, five and, oh, five and a half percent. Two months, that's crazy. One month, five, five. But if you go 30 years, you only get 4.32. In actuality, it should look like this. The longer that you lock up your fiat, it should be as such. And look at this back in 2020. This was awful. 1.41% for 30 years. So there is something wrong with the yield curve. And once we go into these, uh, the treasury yield spreads, you can see that once it inverts, there's a bit of time. And, th and that time, it could be six months, eight months. But after it uninverts and goes back into the normal configuration, you're looking at between one month to six months of where we have a recession. These uh, light white strips are recessions. And you can see that once we invert over here and then uninvert, there's about six months or so, recession. We invert, we uninvert, about a month or two, recession. We invert, we uninvert, about six months, recession. And so far, and even over here, in, during the pandemic, right before the pandemic, we had a slight inversion and then very small, very small uh, recession. And this one looks like, in my personal opinion, uh, quite the biggest inversion that we can see as it's coming down here. And it hasn't fully uninverted up to the top and it hasn't hit in that time frame. So uh, a recession could be on the horizon. I'm not a macro economist. This is just the things that I see. But also there's some other concerning things like uh, consumer loans, credit cards, and uh, revolving plans. <laughs> this is the debt that we have on our credit cards. You know, we, in America, we hit almost 1 trillion today. Well, only goes to 26 July. Oh, sorry, 2nd of August. And consumer loans, CC and, and uh, RP is 998 billion. That's almost a trillion in debt people are putting in credit cards. Why are they put in credit cards? Because they can't afford things. And what's going to happen? They're going to start to see a rise in delinquencies. And we can see that delinquency rate on credit card loans is actually going up as time has gone on. So look, I am not here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you that these are the things that I see. They're concerning, but there are different options for you. I'm just trying to lay those out. So that's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, especially moving into the Bitcoin halving, which will be April of 2024. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.